Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. Since our last video was on subroutines and functions, I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about parameters. Now parameters are a way to pass values to a subroutine or function. You can use one of two different methods of passing these parameters. You can use the by ref keyword, which is the default, or you can use by val. By ref stands for by reference, by val stands for by value. Now when you use the by ref keyword, a new variable is assigned the same memory as the original variable. So in each one of your subroutines and your functions, when you are going to have a parameter, you're going to create a new variable, and then that new variable is going to, by reference, be assigned to the memory from the original variable. When you use the by val keyword, you're going to make a copy of the value and put that value into the new variable. So it's a little different here. When you use by val, you're making a copy of it. But when you're used by ref, your new variable is just simply pointing to the same spot in memory. Now the way this works is that if you use by ref, you've got this memory location that's been allocated for a value and your original variable is going to be assigned to that memory location. Then when you make your call to your subroutine or your function, you're going to create a new variable in that subroutine or function and it's going to simply point by reference to the same memory location as your original variable. When you do the by val, however, you've got your memory location that's been created, you've got your original variable as before that's pointing to that memory location, but instead when you use the by val keyword you're going to create a new memory location and your new variable in your function is going to be pointing to that new memory location. Now the thing you need to understand here is that there's a couple of things going on. First of all, when you do the by val over here on the right, this is kind of nice because you will be able to make a copy of the value that was originally in here and put it into a new memory location. But when you use the by ref, since your, go your new variable is pointing to the same memory location, if you make a change of the value in the by ref reference, uh, in the by ref variable, you're going to also be changing the original variable value as well. So when you change the value of either of these two variables, they will both be affecting each other since they're pointing to the same spot in memory. But when you use by val, you don't have that same problem. You're going to be making a copy of that value and putting it into a brand new memory location when you use the by val keyword. Now just remember, by ref is the default. By val is something that you have to specify. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how this works in our database. I've got a uh, form which has text box value 1, text box value 2, and four different buttons that each perform different calculations. This is the same code that we were working with in our subroutines and functions, except I've changed it up a little bit. I've got my operator here uh, as a string that's been dimmed outside of our subroutines, and I'm assigning the operator within each one of these subroutines. Okay. Notice before I had that math subroutine, but I've gotten rid of it, and now I just simply have the calculation function and each one of my subroutines now, that's uh, when you click on each one of the different buttons, is going to call that calculation function and display it into a message box, whatever it returns back. I've also added this debug.print function after our message box has been run. And the debug.print essentially takes and puts a string of data and puts it into our immediate window down here. So theoretically, the debug print is going to take whatever the value of operator is and stick it into our immediate window. And we're going to see this is going to become pretty handy later on. This is a very handy technique for uh, displaying things to your developers because debug.print will never show to a user. It only shows to this immediate window. And that's very handy so when you want the developer to see some bit of information when they're running through the code, but you don't want something to display to the user. Alright, so just to show how this works, 
I've got 4 and 2. I'm going to use the plus button, which gives me a value of 6. And when I look at the immediate window, we can see the operator string had a value of plus symbol, right? And that's why we have the debug print there, is it's showing us in the immediate window the operator value was set to plus. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, instead of using the operator variable up that's been created up here, instead of using it here in our function to run our select case against, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pass into my calculation function a parameter, and that parameter is going to be the operator. And the way you specify that you want to pass a parameter into a function is first you need to create a variable inside of the function that the, uh, that the parameter is going to be assigned to. So in my parentheses that come after my function name, inside of here I'm going to, I'm going to start out by saying by val, and then I need to give it the, uh, the name of the val of the variable that I need to, that I want to create. So it's op is the name of the variable I want to create. And since I'm creating a variable, I need to also give it a type, a data type. So as string. So essentially I'm going to create this op variable as a string type. And I'm using the by val keyword to specify that I don't want to point op to the value um, that it's being referenced to. I don't want to reference the memory spot. I want to actually get a copy of the value and then put that copy into the op variable. Now I need to, need to also go into my select case and I need to change this from operator to op so that this select case statement will actually use this variable. All right. Now what I need to do, now that I've got this op variable created, I need to actually pass the parameter to my calculation function. And the way you do that is you simply, at the end of your calculation function call, I'm going to add parentheses here, and you'll even see it says by val op as string in bold. So this is even giving me a little IntelliSense that says, okay, inside of these parentheses that I'm about to put up, I need to put in a parameter that will be called op, it's going to be passed in by value, and it needs to be of a type of string. And luckily for me, I've got operator, which matches a, as a string value. And now what's going to happen is my calculation function, we're, we're going to call it, but we're going to pass in the value of operator to the calculation function. And when it gets passed into the calculation function, the first parameter is going to be assigned to the op variable. And the op variable then can be used in my function here to run my select case against. So you see how I'm just passing this, whatever was in the operator variable, I'm just passing the value to the op variable, and then I can use the op variable here in my function. All right. Um, all right. So I think that's all set. Let me go ahead and make a couple of copy and pastes here. I'll do, do, do. All right. And I think we're good to go there. So let's go ahead and, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and clear out my immediate window. Let's go ahead and run 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. And if I look down here in my immediate window, there's that plus sign again. So it functioned exactly the same way as when we use the operator string down here in my select case. It's the same thing. It's just now I'm passing it a parameter of OP. Now, let's, talk, let's see what happens here when we change this from by val to by ref. Okay. I'm going to leave everything else exactly the same. I'm just going to change by, ref, by val to by ref. And again, I'm going to clear out my immediate window. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Run it again. 4 plus 2 equals 6. So that's good. That's still functioning properly. And again, immediate window shows a plus sign. So on the, uh, on the surface, it looks like nothing really has changed. Nothing is different. But if I do this, 
if I leave it as by ref and I say um, let's change OP to equal something else okay so now what I'm gonna do is within the course of my function I'm changing the value of the OP variable that after it's done doing the calculation I'm gonna change it to say something else all right and since we're using the by ref keyword what should happen is that since I'm changing the value of OP to say something else since it's a reference to the same spot in memory as the operator variable that means when I run the debug print and I'm showing up whatever the value is for operator since I'm changing the value to the same spot in memory for both of these variables that means the debug.print should show uh, the value of operator as being the same thing as the value of OP and it's now been changed to say something else so let's see how that works 4 plus 2 equals 6 and if I look down here my immediate window says something else alright so I hope you can understand that this is the by ref and by val difference this is the difference between those two things and then just one last thing here if I take out the by ref statement there I, I, I take that out remember by ref is the default okay because it's it's going to try to use up the least amount of memory access is trying to use the least amount of memory as possible and by ref means that you don't make a duplicate value in memory so if I leave off the by val or by ref it's going to default to the by ref and now when I run this again I clear this out run it again get a value of six and my immediate window again says something else alright so make sure that you understand the difference here between by val and by ref and here's how you create a parameter you need to add the parameter what, what the name of the variable is going to be that you're going to use inside of your function you need to give it a value type and you know um, why don't I go ahead and show you this too I got a little bit of time you can actually add multiple parameters so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna say OP is string so operator is string and then let's do value 1 as double and value 2 as double so now I can pass in three different variables I can pass in three different parameters to make three different variables and now I can change this from txt value to just use the parameters use these variables that I'm creating and passing in as uh, uh, variables here all right so let's do this okay so there's a little bit of cleanup work there so now I need to make sure that I am passing in not only my first parameter but also my second and third parameters and both of these parameters need to be of a type of double all right so the way I can handle that then is my operator is still gonna be passed in there but I need to now pass in me.txt value 1 and me.txt value 2 and now I can just copy and paste this whole thing again and you can see I'm passing in value 1 our parameter 1 parameter 2 is going to be the me.txt value 1 text box and then parameter 3 is going to be the the value from txt value 2 okay so this is all going to work the same way but now I can pass in multiple parameters to my function I think this should be working I hope I didn't fat finger anything here still equals 6 and we still get something else as our immediate window alright so that's how you can pass in multiple parameters or uh, uh, parameters to your functions or your subroutines you could also do this as a sub 
um, it just won't return back a value, all right? So I hope that all makes sense to you. I hope you understand how that works. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message on my inbox on YouTube. Uh, you can also ask me if uh, there's a video you want me to make. Just feel free to send me a message about it, and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much.